Alright then guys, well I'm back and this is going to be your Dip Trace tutorial. Now I'm going to run through um, general intro to the Dip Trace first and um, yeah, we'll build a, uh, make up a circuit, just a basic schematic PCB, nothing special. I haven't got anything planned for it so it's whatever comes to my head at the time. And I'll show you how to export it, so you, you basic run through. Now I'm not going to spend hours on this because I possibly can. Uh, to learn circuit design start to finish and learn in a uh, particular um, package like dip trace it is quite involved and it will take uh, absolutely hours and hours and hours to go through every single thing so I'm not really going to bother with that this is just going to be the basic to get you started to start producing PCBs and um, circuit boards in general so kicking it off as you can see up on the screen is the dip trace home page okay this is where you grab your software these are the guys who actually make dip trace and um, yeah as you can see um, schematic capture PCB layout library creation 3d previews all perfectly can all be done um, downloads you can download it from uh, the download dip trace so click on that there we go, you've got three options on the download dip trace. Um, download the trial, download the freeware version, download it for Mac OS X. So, there we go, that's your free trial and what have you. Um, if you're going to purchase dip trace, then you can buy a dip trace, uh, different versions for non profit volume pricing in online stores by the bar to blast. So it is all broken down. You can get cheaper versions if you're not going to be using dip trace for profit. You're just going to be making circuit boards to yourself, so you can use it in non profit, or you can upgrade the license and start producing circuit boards using dip trace that you're actually going to sell. So if you're a startup company, you've got a product that you want to sell, yeah, you're going to have to purchase dip trace, but no biggie. And for all you academics out there, institutions, educational places, there is an academic option. As you can see, Dip Trace Lite, a little bit better than the free everyday copy. Okay, you do get more pins. You will have to email Dip Trace, the sales team, to uh, grab hold of the license code for that. And you do get a discount on um, the full versions or the extended standards, so on, and how many seats that you want. Just one note, Classroom 1, 10 plus, um, that isn't an unlimited seats above 10, that is only limited to a number of 30 seats, I've been told. Uh, I've actually looked into that myself for my lab, I do have 30 machines in my lab for um, students to use, so I'm going to go for the Classroom version myself eventually, um, but so far the uh, the free one's been perfectly fine, I, I haven't needed multi lab. I never really had to go over 500 pin so far. Um, yeah, so could just use the freeware version, just get a single copy of the full one if you want to go very uh, go over the 500 pings. It's very rare that you would have to. Um, yeah, so right, so that's Dip Trace itself. Uh, other services that they do provide, they do do PCB design, uh, personalized libraries, and um, they also run uh, PCB manufacturing. Don't do it in the UK yet, um, so. For us guys in the UK, um, we we'll have to farm out our uh, circuits to the usual PCB houses around here, uh, like uh, Stephen Circuits, or if you want to go off into Europe, you know, you got PC Paul and what have you, and what you're not, and PCB training and all those. Um, yeah, they perfectly fine, they accept the dip trace layouts if you export as Gerbers and NC drill files as usual, but if you go with these houses, if you are in the US or Australia or wherever, you just can send them your dip trace files themselves and they'll do all the all that conversion bollocks themselves. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good all round up. Um, if you want to find out, you know, under the support page you've got um, video, tutor uh, video guided tours, uh, tutorials, they offer training, stuff like that. So yeah, they really, uh, really do look after you a lot. Uh, let's shut that down. Um, so when you start up Dip Trace, if you start up the actual, um, uh, I forget what it's called now, the you know the main startup, whatever. 
it presents you with this little window uh, with schematic capture, PCB layout, component editor, pattern editor. So schematic capture for designing schematics to import into PCBs or just doing schematic if you just want a schematic. PCB layout, you can go straight in and design in PCBs without doing a schematic capture. Yep, box standard, every single uh, PCB package should allow you to do that, and a decent one should anyway. And it also gives you a component editor and pattern editor. These two are used in com combination with each other to create uh, patterns for your your component editor uh, to create patterns for the schematic and your pattern editor to create footprints for your PCB layout and they can actually be joined together so when you pull out this gonna do your uh, component in schem for the schematic it'll actually import the pattern so you can you can join them and um, yeah attach patterns to components and so on so it's all good right then so layout wise if we click on schematic capture I'll just run you through both the schematic and the PCB layout just a general layout on the screen so you know where everything is uh, across the top okay is your menu bar usual windows bollocks okay Mac it'll be the usual mac -y stuff so I have windows file edit view so on all the usual stuff um, all your little shortcut icons and all of these do all have the usual um, general shortcut so control Z undo, control Y for redo, cut is control X, control C for copy and paste and everything. Everything is shortcutted and you've got so you've got um keyboard shortcuts and everything for practically everything. Even the ones which aren't labelled do have keyboard shortcuts you'll have to sort of go through all the help files to find all those but yeah they are all there. Uh, so we've got a uh, New, open, print, print preview, and what have you, uh, print setting, uh, sheet setups, and stuff like that. Copy pasting is all as usual. Zoom functionality, um, zoom extents, that's the one that we use most times. Um, the other one, zoom window. Zoom window is basically you just click that, draw a window, it will zoom into that box, it does what it says. Zoom extents just zooms the extents of the components on your board so you can see all your components, all your layout on one screen. Yeah, the usual stuff. And undo zoom, so if you zoom in too far, zoom out, you can't be asked, you know, fiddling about with stuff, you can just click the undo zoom. Mm -hmm. Next cross, this is your zoom uh, factor, your scaling factor. Nothing special there. Next one, important, this is your grid layout. Okay, this is actually where you got all the dots. This is your grids. So at the moment, it's set to um, 0 0.05 inches. So every dot is 0 0.05 inches, and that's what you snap into. Um, always just a good tip, always useful to use snap to grid. Never do anything freehand in PCB. Otherwise, everything becomes a right mess. Okay, it's impossible to line anything up if you do anything in freehand. Always use a snap to grid. And if you notice, all these are all in multiples. Okay, so 0.1 inch, half inch, quarter, and so on. Why? Because 0.1 inch is the standard default, de facto pitch for most components. Yeah, the lines are getting blurred now. We are going into a metric system. So. You have to do a little bit of conversion now and again, but generally speaking, everything is in point of an inch and multiples above and below that. So normally it's either set to half inch or point of an inch or whatever. Yep, fine. That's your selecty tool. Okay, if you want to do any component selection and whatever you are, any clicking about. Next one across that looks like crosshairs. This is actually defining origin, so you can shift the origin about on the screen basically the origin is where you measure from the origin sets your zero point and you measure out from that so you can do quick and dirty you know back of the envelope measurements and if you take a look down bottom right hand side as we shift the origin around that's now zero zero and then we'll move out of curve so you can actually see it's measuring from the zero point so yeah straightforward next long component placement if you want to place particular components you can add libraries in search components and so on yeah um, very rare that you use place component 
next five components useful one if you're having trouble searching for all the libraries which we'll come to in a moment search component you can get it to search through all libraries or active libraries or selective libraries things like that if you're having trouble looking for components further along these are all your interconnectivity between your components your um, so you write down a component you want to connect a wire between the two or use a bus and things like that this is where, where you go so you can connect pin to pin so placing wires placing buses so on placing bus connectors moving on hierarchy stuff now what you can do down the bottom of the screen you can see this one this layout is labelled sheet 1 you can have multiple sheets so you can do multiple layouts and then you can use a, hi a hierarchy block so you can build up a circuit out of multiple schematics if you like uh, not really going to cover that much because it is quite in depth and um, first time round it can confuse the arse out of everything so we're just going to go through like I said just the basic but just to let you know it is hierarchy capable next across place table always useful placing tables you can select rows column type whatever yeah if you want to create a list of all your components or if you've got any uh, labels that you want to put down in schematic you know you want to label things one two three four five six and you can have a table one means number one means whatever number two means whatever number three means whatever always useful good for notation further along uh, lines, arcs, squares, rectangles, if you want to draw shapes and stuff or if you want to add text into your schematic or images as well you can import and place pictures so okay, you can place a picture in there JPEG bitmaps and what have you all that sort of stuff so you can add images into your schematic might be useful you might have a um, you know a back of the envelopes schematic or something and you just want to whack it in on a quick or a, I don't know, you, you've got a pin out to a particular chip that's custom, you want to whack in an image of it, you can do that in the corner and just say, you know, text underneath it, this is blah blah blah, blah of this component here which have designs, dot, 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 whatever. I uh, don't really use them that much, but it's always good. Um, drawing the, the boxes can be helpful, the same lines, it can help split up a circuit. So you can draw a box around the power supply section, a box around controller sections and so on, you can label it, label them appropriately so that anybody else that picks up your work later on knows exactly what they're looking at so brilliant thumbs up for that that's your top menu next one down these are your libraries all across here discrete discrete schematics uh, discrete SMD European symbols and what have you and things batteries buzzers capacitor networks connectors connectors more connectors and so on. Uh, library is quite in depth. You know, take a look at the uh, pots, variable resistors, pots. Absolutely billions of them. Okay. Same with diodes. There's tons of them in there. These libraries are really, really good. Um, it won't be very often that you'll have to design a component. If you have to design a component, it's normally it's a connector or something because the connector library as in all PCB packages, never great. And yet they do connectors, may not do uh, headers, header pins, simply because if you imagine, a header pin can be anything from one to whatever, infinitely long. <laughs> you can have uh, you know, 100 header pins on your board. So having one pin to 100, 100 different options of the same bloody thing, it's completely useless. So you design it when you need it so header pins generally aren't on here some packages will have them some packages won't um, some packages will only have say two or three different ones but generally speaking stuff like that you've got to design yourself um, but yeah, it's no biggie and designing components in dip trace is really easy I'll cover that later on anyway there are all your libraries across the top so pick them all out generic ones to start with and then later on further down the line you've got all of your um, uh, manufacturers libraries so things like Actel, Agilent, uh, Allegro, Tierra, so on uh, Atmos, as you can see Adreno Shield there that's one that I've added in myself for shields that I've done uh, so you can design your own component layout so I've done shields for the UNO 
I've done shields with the Megas and so on for Adrenos, I've done the same thing for the MSP. Um, 430 and the Stellaris launch pad as well by TI, so yeah, like I said, it's really easy to, to do them. Um, yeah, so your library's across the top. Use the arrows to scroll through the library. Little corner arrow at the side brings up the scroll bar so you can scroll through it a lot quicker. Try not to use that too much because you do miss out first time around on what libraries there are. And all the libraries are displayed down the left hand side. Now, as you go down the library, these are all your library parts, uh, the individual parts in the library, all labelled up pretty obviously. So you, you should be able to find stuff what you need if you apply a bit of common sense to what you're doing. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go to the discrete one. Okay, under the uh, on the Dip Trace website, actually underneath the um, support pages, somewhere buried there, there is a uh, document that you can download that explains the layout of these libraries, what all the codes mean. So, which is really really good. Most packages don't actually do that; they actually hide that information elsewhere because the libraries are all over the place. But Dip Trace does it really well. But just to, as an example, uh, cap one hundred means cap with a pitch space of 0.1 inches. Okay. And down the bottom, we've got a pattern for that particular component. And it, instead of giving the imperial units, it actually gives it in metric, so you can see both. So it's a pitch of a 2.54. Um, the only drawback is sometimes this pattern value can be quite long, so it actually goes off the screen. That's a bit of a screw up, I think, but it's no biggie. Um, yeah, so if you don't know exactly what component pitch you got, yeah, these just for a note, these are all in inches. Okay, so this will be 0.35 inches, which is down here in metric. So you got imperial, you got metric inches, millimeters. So if you're working in either one, it's easy to pick out your components and easy getting the right sizes. All right, next thing on the only other option thing is down the right hand side your properties design manager pin parts and so on this all gets populated as you start adding in components okay it basically contains all the properties for that particular component so if i whack down this capacitor return and highlight it as you can see in the design manager that's the capacitor that it is and up the top parts it gives you the parts markings and so on so yeah whatever so you can highlight it it comes up with relative junk and you can add in additional stuff if you want so adding extra component markings and all that crap um, generally you don't have to because normally the markings are quite sufficient in the dip trace libraries um, the only time when you want to add in anything is any additional information that you just want to add in for your own benefit or for anyone else's <coughs> uh, benefit Right, so that's the schematic layout. So we'll close that down into the PCB one. And then again, concentrate on these two for now because these are the ones that we're going to be running through. Uh, as you can see, a very similar layout. They've kept it the same, which is really, really good. That way, you don't lose anything. It's easy to find stuff. Uh, all your menus are the same thing, same, more or less the same stuff. Uh, next to your page set, you've also got 3D preview. You can use that. You can only use that once you lay down a board edge, though. Without a board edge, you don't have a board. You can't preview your board because it doesn't know what size the board is. So, just a tip on that. All your copy and paste zooms and everything, your grids and everything, all the same. Uh, component searching again, finding components. You can search for components on your design, top and bottom side, or you can search for components in the libraries. Origin is exam exactly the same, a couple of extra things, it's got measure functions so you can actually measure uh, pitches, layouts, uh, spacings and so on and you can do quick dirty measurements from point to point and there you go, it gives you the length and so on, uh, further on uh, rat's nest lines, if you want to place rat nest that will be from when you're importing your schematic in if you missed out a connection is schematic, you can't be us editing, you can actually add in rats, lines and stuff like that. I'll speak about that later on when we do our boards. Placing pads, uh, setting wires, mounting holes, as I said in the 
previous video of mounting holes lay them out first. Mountain holes are different to pads. Uh, pads have a hole plus a ring of copper around a hole to solder to, so that's basically a pad, it's something solderable. A mountain hole is something without any copper, it's solely there for mechanical purpose, mechanical fixings. It's just purely the hole. Uh, copper pouring, if you're going to do anything like ground planes and things like that. Adding dimension, so that's similar to the measure function. The only difference is you actually leave the dimensions on your design. So if anything you've got the bald extents that you want to just note down, send to your manufacturers, they can double check that the, what they have is the right size, the right scale. Always useful to do. Select your tool, exactly the same thing. You can either point to select as you highlight, it shows you what you select, or you can drag a box around. It's all pretty intuitive. Again, same thing as the schematic thing, you've got tables, lines, pictures, images and everything. So if you want to add in your own custom logos and stuff like that, you can import it into your PCBs again. Um, uh, top assembly, what have you, keep out, so everything, they're all your layers that you can work with and what you're not. So the highlighting. Routing, these are all your tracks, these are actually your copper runs, so manual routing, so you can add copper tracks in and route setup that sets the default values for your routing. So like I said, set your default values first, that's where you'd set them. All these options, everything that I'm going through here, they're all in the menus as well as at the top. These are the, whoops, oh, buggering out. What have I gone and done? There we go, right, we're back. Like I said, all these... Um, everything here in the menu can be found in your drop down boxes generally speaking these are the only ones that you actually need these are the primary uh, um, functions that you need things like routing and what have you, component choice library stuff like that, it's all in the menu but these are the ones that you mainly use they're all there in front of you so you don't have to mess about with trying to find stuff uh, next one on, this is your for your board layout place board outline, that's what you want to do first whenever you design a board and circuit board. Uh, auto router set up and auto routing, it does have an auto router, I don't envy auto routers, I absolutely hate them, they never work properly unless you spend hours and hours and hours setting and configuring all the setup and design rules and everything, they're a complete pain in the arse. I don't recommend using auto routers unless you've got a very complex board and you're very very confident with setting up the parameters you can spend ages doing this and keep on hammering away until you get something useful I always find that it's always best to do it by hand uh, for next on um, your DRC your design rule checks and your design rules so design rules go to your design checking so you can check things up so you can specify spacings, track widths and so on. You know, minimum gaps, minimum dimension and what have you. And you can do an automatic design check on that. It's pretty intuitive to do. Half the time you don't actually need to do it because your board is quite simple. You only really need to do design board checking if you start getting into a complex board. Next option, this is what the layers that you're working on. If you're working on the top, you have it selected to top. Working to the bottom, you have it selected to bottom. So if it's selected to top, you're only working on the top. The only components that you can select and the only tracks that you'll be able to select will be on the top layer. Switch it to bottom. Your design uh, flips. It brings the bottom to the top. And top of your design. You can highlight, select and edit the bottom side. Brilliant, you know, without editing anything on the top or messing about with your top design, so you can separate out layers. Next on component placement, just like auto routing, you can do automatic component placement, but usual fact is the machine doesn't know where you want your components, so it'll do best guess, usually it'll whack them in the wrong bloody place. Completely useless, I find. Um, but it does give you the option, most packages do, I've never really find it, found it that useful, just like the bloody auto routing, you can spend hours and hours pissing about with this. Want to be quicker just to do it yourself. You know what you want, the computer doesn't. Um, and then, uh, last one, arrange components. If you do import, you 
components and you've got a huge amount of them, they're all over everywhere after you've imported into schematic. You can do component a range and just for example if they're all over the place dot 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 and some of them are over the top of each other. If you do auto arrange it stacks them all up nice and neatly so you can see what you've got on the screen with that, giving yourself a huge headache. So that's all that menu. Uh, library is exactly the same, bop 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 bop, just like I said, I did the Adreno shields, that's the layout from the Megas and the Unos. They're all pretty simple to do. Uh, the only difference is you don't have the bottom window simply because you're just working with footprints now in the PCB package. Um, you don't care what the schematic symbol is because this is what you're actually getting or what you see is what you get at the end of the day. Uh, so that's all done. Um, gives you all your units and everything and so on so it's easy to pick out the right thing. Batteries, general, bridges, caps, so on. If you want to do your circuit by hand, you want to do your PCB straight off without a schematic. Easy. Right hand side, all of your uh, layer settings, you can switch on and off layers. Uh, objects, same thing, you can switch on and off objects here, so you can only display particular things, properties. Again, highlight a component. It gives you all the properties, its dimensions, its angle, markings and so on. All the usual crap. Design manager, exactly the same sort of thing. Pin components, exactly the same sort of thing. Um, it's the schematic -y type stuff. The only difference is uh, you've got other things like um, nets. You can select particular nets. You can select go by components if you want to highlight components or highlight nets and so on. No biggie. Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, the origin exactly the same as before. The only difference is press F1 to display the origin when you're in PCB mode, first of all. Then you can shift your origin about and measure out. Same thing as before, nothing's really changed from the schematic. Right then, so saying that, let's kick things off. You want to design your board, you want to make a PCB, start off with the schematic. Select the components that you want. You might want a uh, coin cell. There we go. One coin cell battery. Uh, you might want a resistor connected to it. So let's go down and pick out a resistor. Say, you know, resistor half inch, one of 500 ones, or one of 400. One of 400. That's generally a standard resistor. 10, 10 millimeter pitch. Yeah, right. We'll have one of them. Uh, capacitors. Uh, let's say a uh, 0.1 microfarad, so it's going to be roughly around you know five millimeters. So it's going to be somewhere around here, probably 0.2, yeah, five millimeters, which will be 0.2 inches, which is a five millimeter pitch. Um, just like to point out the ones which the actual symbols for some reason they like to use polarized ones for the caps or um, you know these funky little American symbols not the default standard ones. Um, if you want uh, polarised then P is for polarised. R and A means radial or axial. Generally speaking these ones are for your tantalium beads, your electrolytics and so on. Normally electrolytics in the discrete library. All the other ones are all under caps library and what you not. So let's whack down a capacitor. So let's uh, what it'll look like in the PCB, that's what it looks like in the schematic, yep, yeah, right, whatever. And, um, I don't know. Let's just, just for the sake of it, just whack down a diode. A 1 in 4148. Does it have a 1 in 4148? Let's have a look down here. Right, can't see one down there, so what we can do is type in, go into our find components. 1 in 4148. Uh, you know, select all libraries, find now, and hey, look at this. Uh, once it stops finding, it will come. It will highlight the find now that will be up, and it will come up and stop. Till then, it will search through all the libraries, and it's pulling out the, the one in four and four eights. So you got one in the spice menu. Click on patterns. You can see the patterns, and you've just got a Philips one. It's got a Fairchild one. Manufacturers, yeah, right, whatever. 
doesn't matter, 1 in 4 and 4 and 8, so 1 in 4 and 4 and 8, yep, yeah, okay, alright, we'll have that one, so, play set component, so that's how you search with the, through the libraries, it's really easy, if you can't find it, just search for it, it'll probably be there, you finish placing, just hit escape, and all I was doing, I was just highlight and just left click, first, just left click, drop it on, whatever, so that's our components, we can select them all, move them about, do whatever we want with them, I like individual ones, move them about everywhere, just lay them out as we want them, so battery, let's stick that up at the top, you can spacebar to rotate, or you can R to rotate, like I said it's pretty intu intuitive, R to rotate, or space, it's normally the same for everything, lay out your components as you want them, just put your little uh, print hat sheet, I'm just going to do it something like this, like I said, I'm not working to anything. Now then, that's our layout worth everywhere. We want our components to our uh, little paper drawing that I mentioned in the last one. So follow your drawing, lay it out. Hey presto, you've got your components out, not a biggie. Join wires together if you can use the place wire to connect wires between the points and so on. If you don't want to do that, you can just click, click from point to point. Simple. Like I said, it's very intuitive. At the moment, I'm placing Y, so I can't actually select components. If I want to select components, hit Escape. It goes back to my little selecty thing, and then I can drag components about to neaten up the design, and the tracks will move about with them. So, no biggie. Uh, there we have it. That's our little design all connected together. Just point out a few things. If you are checking the design, which you should be, you can move the mouse over the uh, pin connections and it will actually highlight the pins that a wire is connected between them. So, as you can see, you've got two red ones. If I highlight over the wire, it shows you what the net name is of that particular connection and it also highlights that particular net. So it's really easy to find out whether things are connected together. So again, hover over the component, it highlights components, hover over pins, it highlights pins, hover over your nets, it highlights the nets. Very intuitive, don't have to click on anything, that's all automatic. So there we have it. If you want, you can right click on your nets, you can set properties for it, you can edit the classes, and so on set trace whips so you can automatically set trace whips so for auto routing you would have to do all this beforehand like I said auto routing is a right pig to work with I don't like it in the least and yeah, so you can set your different nets do different you know set different default values you can even add in values if you want and so on right so that's laying out your schematic really piss simple easy Select, you, select the library, drop the component on, click between the points, schematic done. Very basic stuff. Mouse will scroll in, scrolls out. Like I said, I'll just show you uh, zoom window. You can zoom into various areas. Undo zoom takes you back. Zoom to extents, zooms into the full layout so you get the biggest image on the screen possible showing you all your components so that's that one and so on so all right once you're happy with that save your design always save it as you know this one's just i'll uh, just do it as test because this is just a basic tutorial run through so save it as test everything saved and we can convert to pcb before I do that, I just want to mention schematic information. Like I said, there is a pin count and freebie version. I haven't upgraded this one to the academic one. I'm just using it as a basic download freebie, freebie jobby. It gives you your maximum pin count, component count, parts count, nets count, buses count, number of sheets, so on. Always useful. Pin count is the most useful one possible. You are, are using a 300. It does tell you how many pins you've used. Eight pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pins. And yeah, close that. So, if I just mentioned that, is a really good way to find out how many pins that you got on the design. Make sure that you don't go over your pins. 
and if you're slowly building up design it's getting more complex you can see how many pins that you got to work with so you know whether or not to pay out for that extra license and the licenses are incremental you only have you, you can only pay for what you use so if you just want an extra you know go up to the next step 500 pins that you want to pay for that then if you want to go up to the full one yeah you can pay just add on the price that you've already paid so you don't have to pay out a full whack because you've already laid out some money to it so it's a bit like you so it's a bit like you know paying it off over the paying off a car over the year or over five years or something you can pay off your design package over a course of time and just increment it as and when you need it brilliant anyways uh, let's do a convert to PCB so one hit starts loading up your PCB layout software uh, design rules uh, schematic rules you can use rules that you set in schematic or you can use custom rules if you want generally speaking the schematic ones are perfectly fine okay and bingo there we have it we've got our battery cell there we have got our coin cell battery we've got a resistor we've got a cap we've got the diode so on yeah brilliant you can uh, use this selective button you can shift things about now these are rats lines okay which is up here place rat line a rat line is just a, a connection between it's basically it's your net okay it's not a physical connection it's not a copper connection that you'd see on your PCB it's, it's one that's held in software just to say that one pad is connected to the other that's all that it is okay so we've got our layout there first things first when you're designing PCB in, do your board layout so it's board edge whack down your board edge so it's just point and click left clicking it everywhere and as you can see it's slowly dragging out me uh, a reasonable square you can have it to polygon shape weird shapes whatever you want yeah if that's the board layout that you want, that's the board edge that you layout that you want, the edge of your design. So that is the maximum ascent you have to work in that area. Because according to your design rules, that's the shape it has to be, that's the area you're working. Brilliant. Next up, place your mounting holes. Okay, if you've got screw on feet or posts that you have to attach it to, mounting holes is always good. So select your mounting hole. pop them down roughly where you want them escape so you come out to placing mounting holes tells you where your mounting holes are and you can either select your mounting hole you can whack in your dimensions and whatever your outer hole hole diameter and so on for each one or you can right click properties and you can specify again everything that you got in the properties is in the properties panel so you know like I said everything is on screen half the time you don't have to bother with right clicking everything so that's laid out your uh, your um, mounting holes well let's make these I don't know uh, say a three diameter hole three diameter outer so three three for everything so I get three millimeter holes with no pads or anything like that I don't know why it does an outer diameter because you don't actually get the outer weird they're just mounting holes there's no copper surrounding these so like I said three millimeters if you're not too sure where to place these you can set your origin to say the bottom right hand corner of your board and then you can use down in the bottom corner you can use your XY just to get a general idea of where you're uh, placing so this one is uh, whoops into the corner this one was placed seven and a half by about 3.1 3.2 millimeters in the one and as you move it about you can see this is moving about so you can easily you know place your components about the place if you do use the snap to grid functions and you set it all up you can set it to whatever points of an inch do all your measurements and points of an inch you can just count the grids if you really want to it's no that's no biggie mouse wheel zoom in and out just like before um, your extents again exactly the same schematic zoom to extents click on it it zooms the extents and everything 
So at this point you're thinking, yeah, start placing components. No, you can't. Set your routing setup. This specifies all your minimum and maximum dimensions for your tracks and the wires. Okay, so trace width, millimeter, perfectly fine for this one. It's just a generic one. If your pads are smaller, you might want to say specify it to 0.5. Uh, generally speaking, consult your um, whoever's making the board for your minimum and maximum spec. So if they can't make traces below 0.5, they can only do them to one millimeter. Then set it your default to one millimeter. Clearances again, depending on what your manufacturer's clearances are, set that to the absolute minimum. So. If the minimum clearance is say 0.25 millimeters, set that to say 0.25 millimeters. If they give it to you in, your, in imperial units, in inches, then you'll have to do the conversion or go up into the menu. I think it's under edit or view or objects or somewhere around there. You can change units and then you can specify everything in inches and so on. I'm just doing it in millimeters because it's there, but you can change it. Um, for the vires, you know, you might want very small vires, you might want them the same size as your traces, so your outer diameter you might want one millimeter, so it matches your the width of your track, you might want them to say 1.5, so they're that little bit big, because you're hand soldering, it depends whether you're hand soldering or whether you're plating or what, or if you're putting a, on a, a pin in there for um, the measuring, whether you're using a little bit of wire, but maybe using a vire pin, maybe using a punch, or something like that for your vires, who knows? It all depends on how you're manufacturing it again. So, set this to what you're manufacturing it to. So, I might want a one millimeter hole with a 0.7 hole because I'm going to be plating it so I can get away with it being small. Okay, copper to board outline that's the amount of copper to the outside edge of your design 0.5 millimeters. No, let's say one millimeter have a little bit of clearance so you would set that if you've got any um, oh let's go back you'd set this value if you're using things like um, PCB spaces inside like the PCB the slot spaces if you're slotting the board into a PCB you don't want any of your tracks or any copper coming into contact with your, uh, your guides because they're metal you don't want them to short short out across tracks or, or to your ground and if it's ground it doesn't matter but you, know, you want to keep you want to isolate them so you want to set your this to make sure that you do isolate your, your copper from the from the case or you, you don't want if it's a tight fit and you don't want to damage your copper again set that so, okay we're done next up start placing your components so place your components again space to rotate so I'm gonna have my battery cell just there I'm gonna have my cap there uh, rotate the diodes and what I'm saying there and have my resistor just there something like that so there we go we've got tons of room if you've got tons of room then just select everything and um, shift it across you know whack it in the middle away from your your uh, mounting posts that way you're not going to interfere with anything once you've done that select the manual routing click on the pad and you can start routing your copper about the place so at the moment I'm working on top copper so I don't particularly want to do this because as you can see oh, if I escape that get back to center there we go as you can see my solder connections to my coin cell they're actually underneath my coin cell I can't solder underneath a coin cell on the top side because the coin cell is in the way um, I have to solder to the bottom side so same with the capacitor, resistors, single sided boards are generally sold to the bottom side so make sure that you're working on the bottom side so when you're routing tracks they route on the bottom side so there we go so that's it, hey presto just single click and click between the points because we've already set um, minimum dimensions you don't have to piss about with changing track widths and what have you these tracks if we select the track it tells you the segment layer is actual fact the bottom because we're working on the bottom brilliant um, 
and so on it tells you what the net is it tells you what the width is and so on so yeah all funky do you know hunky dory it's simple as that because we've got our board outline we can look at the 3d layout now let's load that up now if you install the 3d libraries which is separate it's a separate download um, you can associate 3D models with your components. Because I haven't, it comes up with this window, it says, you know, nothing is associated with these patterns. Yeah, okay, we're up, whatever. If I do that, there we have it. We have a circuit board in 3D. Uh, no 3D patterns on here, because I haven't got that, but it shows you the silk pads, uh, board mounting holes, outside area what it actually looks like and on the underside it shows you the tracks so where our connections brilliant great what more do you want you can get an idea of the layout of your board in 3d and what you see is basically what you get so this is what will be made when you receive it back that's what you'll see brilliant anyways let's line it out back in a moment right and back again um, next thing that we're going to run through is up here this is a copper pour this is basically connecting um, well basically laying down a copper area and connecting it to a particular net and usually it's a uh, for uh, ground planing which is uh, basically you utilize all the unused area for ground and it's a way of uh, shielding out noise from your circuit okay so uh, in order to do that select the ground uh, the pour option and um, yeah wipe down an area where you want to pour copper now you don't actually have to do this to the um, edge of your board once you hit return um, gives you the copper board dialog box and the options so you can choose whether to uh, what sort of fill pattern that you want whether you want a solid whether you want a horizontal or vertical lines whether you want cross hatching and so on or grid layout completely up to you normally a, a solid uh, area will be perfectly fine um, simply because there's less work to do when you're removing all the copper okay solid areas quicker to work with you've got nothing to remove <clears throat> anyway moving on um, you can specify all of your um, line spaces and so on whips and everything your line spacing and your whips um, minimum copper area and connected areas and what have you um, things like uh, island removal um, like I said unconnected island removal unconnected if you have that ticked it means any unconnected islands will be removed and any internal islands which aren't connected get removed as well you might as well remove the crap which isn't connected uh, if it's double sided then obviously you might want to leave the internal ones and then brew, do a couple of um, top to bottom connections a few vias just to connect the various ground areas but normally we don't want them so let's get rid of them connect to net under connectivity this is the net that you actually want to connect to so make sure you know what your net names are so let's say we're going to connect it to net 3 uh, thermals always useful the thermals when you're soldering you want the heat to remain at the pads you don't want it to leach into the plane because the plane is a huge copper area so it's going to act like a heat sink uh, thermals are always useful so we can say a uh, spoke design at say 45 degrees, but widths of let's say 0.5 millimeters. And thermals for SMDs are going to be the same. Um, not we don't have any SMD stuff, but you can still have it selected if you want. And uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. Now we have it. It's poured. Job done. Now, if we want to edit this about, we can, uh, we can escape, set the edge, we can 
remove our copper core up out of place. If you don't like it, then you can um, remove it as well. You can shrink it down, so you can do change the uh, areas as well. And so on, so you can mash it up with your um, design. You can go out outside your design if you want, unless you're panelizing. Well, that is going to be a problem. But uh, yeah, something like that is perfectly fine. You go back into it, right click, properties, run through it all again, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and it will update once you hit the update button up in your layers list. You can edit it about if you really want to. And um, yeah, go back into your 3D view, see what it looks like. And again, that's what your board looks like. As you can see, you've got an area, this is where you Copper pour is, but your ball down line is going to be cut to that size, so perfectly fine, whatever. It doesn't matter too much. Obviously, if you're panelizing, then you want to do it to the you know the, the extent of your board. You can play about with that as much as you like, and that's basically how you out how you design a PCB. You know, it's simple, and um, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the more practice that you get. And uh, yeah, that's that. So. Again, save your work, whatever, test again. Oops, there we go. So save as test. Uh, once you're finished doing your bald layout, do a print. Make sure everything is what it is, and so on. Um, if you're not too sure what you're printing, go to print preview. You get a preview of what it is. Objects, you can switch on and off different things, different layers and so on, different parts of your circuit so you can just print out what you actually want and so on. Um, if you're doing uh, you know, uh, chemical etching and what have you, you can print the negatives or book layouts and so on so you can develop um, and so on. Calibrate, calibrate your printer so you can get you know, points of a millimetre accuracy if you really want that so print out your design double check all your pads make sure your components fit if you're happy with that then you're ready to export for me export Gerbers and NC drills uh, I don't really trust any other stuff but you can export um, to other packages if you want so you can export to AutoCAD PCAD and so on you can do the ASCII netlists and whatever you can output pick and place um, stuff. Generally speaking for me it's Gerber, so you can select the Gerbers, select the layer that you want to output, you can preview it, yeah that's the top side, bottom side and so on and all that you have to do is to hit the export button, yeah well several app features have, haven't been specified, do you want to set them automatically? Yep, fine, I'll do that and you can export the Gerber that is and they're your uh, manufacturing plots okay so you, you go through it you can either export all and um, you can go through export each one over and over and over and over again whatever if you don't know what the hell you're exporting it's a good function if you know what layers to export whether you just want the top copper bottom copper board outline and so on if you just want to do the mask or if you just want to do the year your uh, stencils for pasting and stuff like that then fine just export those in individually I just recommend just doing the top bottom and board outline maybe the silk if you're getting it done externally don't worry about the other stuff unless you're getting it, your stuff pick and place and, um, or solder marks and stuff like that you know it is what it is anyways that's that one and when you're exporting so that will export your gerbers your gerbers are basically your artwork your actual copper areas if you want to export your holes then export that as um, where is it NC drill or machine drill or tap drill depending on which uh, manufacturing um, plot that you want again just like with Gerber or DXF and what have you I use Gerber and I use NC drill so NC drill again you can preview where your drill holes are and what you're not um, 
export just like before tools haven't been specified yet, specify the tools wax in the tool coding and save your file ready for um, manufacturing and that's it really there's not much more to say that's the basics the only things which you might want to pay attention to is routing tracks um, tracks should be routed horizontally and vertically um, try and avoid doing weird angles um, if you've got corners try not to do 90 degree um, edges so something like let's try not to do 90 degrees okay especially if you're etching because you can get uh, etching pooling in the corners it doesn't flow out that well just mite them you can just do select your track you can drag them in and out the corners 45 degrees make it neat etching flows in etching flows out um, same thing but generally um, same thing for milling if it's a 45 degree track run it's a shorter run than it is a 90 degree track run so not only does it machine better but the signals propagate down the tracks a lot lot better as well anyone doing any um, RF design or whatever you should be able to you know knows all about that so mitering to 45 degrees if you are doing the RF work then you should know already all the pros and cons between you know angled lines and what have you if you're routing a micro a micro strip line or anything like that transmission line it's got to be routed around components you do that as a curved with a ground plane on the outside and so on with, or maybe not with a ground plane depends whether you're on co-plane or not you know whatever you know what you need but generally speaking 45 degree lines if you're doing double sided boards um, you can route the track all as one, all on the same layer, and then you can right click on the track segment. So you can do a segment layer, you can say shift it to top and bottom for layers, or you can change track widths if you really have to. Um, little bits and bobs like that. Uh, but like I said, have a play about with it, and uh, the more circuit design you do, the easier it becomes. And all these tracks, once you lay them down, they are really editable. They're all point and click, drag them about. You know, everything is drop and drag or point and click, or you know, it's really easy. It's really intuitive to use. That's why I love Dip Trace. Um, in packages like Eagle, you can't really do things like this. You have to go up, say right, select the icon, change back down, select the track that you want to change, go back up. I want to change the pad words track sizes to this and it's all set down in a particular menu and blah 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 so you've got to go in and out of menus selecting things that you want to change it's not just a case of right click change properties whatever done job done dip trace is really really easy it's been well thought out and it's been hammered back as I've always a million times so saying that just get down have a play about with it and um, yeah, have a go at producing a board, and I'll see you next time.